is a presentation that was done by Mr. Terry Cooper, the Texas RV professor. And Mr. Cooper is a master certified technician. He is also my business partner, and we have started the National RV Training Academy and built a training facility in Athens, Texas. And this man knows his stuff. So I'm excited to share this with you. This program is a little lengthy, so we've broken it into five components. So there actually, you will see four other recordings that's part of this program, and you can watch it at your own pace. But these are five things you need to know before you buy an RV, or if you have already bought an RV, that will help you understand more about what you bought. Okay, so the key thing here is that Mr. Cooper is going to help you understand how you visualize yourself in the RVing experience. What is it that you're going to do with it? How are you going to use it? Are you going to go full time? Are you going to be a part timer? Is it just for pleasure use, etc.? So he is adamant about things that you need to know. And the very first one that's going to come up is this one. It's called, What Do You Enjoy Doing? or What Is Your Lifestyle? So without any further ado, let's bring in Mr. Cooper and have him share with you about this very first thing you need to know. Thank you. Hello everyone, Steve Anderson here with Work Camper News and I have joining me today, Terry Cooper, the Texas RV professor. Welcome, Mr. Cooper. Good morning, good morning. Or what time is it anyway? Well, maybe I should say good day, good day. Good day, good day works. And we are here to talk about an exciting subject. And Mr. Cooper is going to be sharing with you the five things, the five things that you need to know before buying an RV. And folks, these are important elements that you need to really listen carefully to, digest, and above all, utilize. And if you'll take the tips and and they're not really tricks because a trick is something that uh, you're really not too sure whether it's going to happen the way you think it's going to when you try it on somewhat, someone. These aren't tricks. These are tips that will work and will make a difference to you in your future when it comes to buying that RV and utilizing it and uh, hopefully work camping and traveling in that RV. So, Mr. Cooper, without any further ado, I want you to take it away. Give a little bit about your credentials. I didn't toot your horn real loud, but um, let them know a little bit about who you are, what you are, and where you're coming from, and take it away and have a great presentation. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, Mr. Anderson. Um, I'm a master certified RV technician. I started out on the production line a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> Almost ashamed to say when, but... Uh, I've been on that side of the, the fence and uh, then moved on and, and, and began to do a lot of service work at dealerships. I had mobile, had my own mobile service, went to work for a college down in Waco, Texas State Technical College, and I actually started their RV technician program there. Seems the uh, state of Texas has a mandate because that school is owned by the state of Texas that if an industry comes to that school and requests training, technical training, that school is required by state law to put it together. And so what had happened was the Texas RV Association came to the, the state of Texas, that college, and said, look, we need training on technicians. We have a major shortage. And my, 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 that was, wow, that was, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago. And so they were talking about having shortages then. So one thing led to another. Next thing you know, I'm putting together the program. I'm the department chair and things are rocking and rolling. Uh, I mean, we had students coming through there. The only dilemma we had was it's a one-year program. And so sometimes it was hard for individuals to come and spend time with us for a year. And as all college courses are, there's an awful lot of fluff in them because you know that you're gonna have students who are gonna be out. So when we went through a little crunch with the economy uh, back in the 08, 09, and 10, the school decided they had to kind of consolidate things and they'd gotten a big federal grant. Uh, and so they came to us and said, that building we built for you that looks like a RV service center, we need to pull it back because we've got this multi-million dollar grant. So we pulled back, finished our students and I worked at the school, took care of solar, started their solar program for them. But you know, if your heart's not in it, it's not much fun. And that's where I got, I got to that point where it wasn't much fun. That's about the time that I met you, Mr. Anderson when we were going through all of that turmoil and next thing you know we're joining forces and next thing you know we're traveling across the country doing training technician training because it gave us a chance to do what we really love to do is to travel 
And so some of these things I'm going to share with you today are based upon those experiences of my working in the production line, teaching at the school, and then going along on the road training technicians, but also training a lot of consumers. We pull into an RV park. We would have already pre-registered, maybe have 25 sites for students. We'd rent a room there to park, and next thing we'd be doing would be doing a class. So things progressed, and later on, we got to the point where we realized it was becoming more and more difficult to find parks that accommodate us. And so what we did was is that we then bought an RV park. The Andersons and the Coopers pooled our funds together, and we bought an RV park uh, here in Athens, Texas, which is just outside of Dallas. So we got all the intersection of I-20, 30, 45, and 35 coming through this area. So we're now operating the National RV Training Academy in a huge building, uh, it's 15,000 square foot training facility. And I'll show you some pictures here in just a little bit, but long and short of it, I'm just sharing all this to tell you that the thing that you're looking for may need a little bit of extra push. You may need a little extra training, but here's what I want you to, let's start out from ground zero. Some of you are already looking at some things. You're already making some decisions. You've probably already been to some RV shows. How do you see yourself? I mean, why are you doing this? Uh, you know, we know we, in our lives, we have a, a certain amount of time that we live and then we don't live. And so the question, I guess, that I want to ask you, why are you here? How do you see yourself in this RV experience? I mean, I know I, a lot of times I'll do RV shows and, and I can kind of peruse through the, the dealer's areas and talk to the different people there and while in between seminars. And it's amazing to listen to the families talk because you can listen to them and you hear them visualizing to themselves, they're daydreaming of what this thing's gonna be like. And, you, and you'll hear the wife say, well, honey, here's a place we can do this. Here's a place for the kids, the bunks. And, and oh man, look at there, big screen television. You know, we can do so much. And you know what I believe is happening right now through all these things we've got going on with this lockdown and the shelter in places where whatever we wanna call it, this virus thing, has happened to us is this making people go back and realize what's important to them. So I ask yourself, what's really important to you? How do you see yourself, okay? Now, in part of my career, I worked for this big company and I was a regional manager for them and I would travel across the country visiting some of the different accounts that we had. And what we did is we took care of the maintenance, the housekeeping, the grounds, the food service, of colleges, public school districts, factories, hospitals. And so I was always having to wear a suit because I was always interfacing with the presidents and the vice presidents of these organizations. Well, I remember one time I, uh, I, I found this pair of shoes and they had some exotic leather on them and that's how they were made. And, and I was just so in love with them. I just loved the way they looked and I put them on, but they didn't quite fit just right. And I got talking to the salesman. He said, you know, this leather will stretch quite a bit. And so if it were me, I would, I would think about something like this because it worked for you. Well, I went in and bought these shoes. And I won't tell you how many hundreds of dollars I spent for them, but I bought the shoes because they would go well with my suits. Every single time I would put those shoes on and wear them all day when I was visiting my clients, I'd hobble like a horse back to the hotel. My feet would be so sore. And I'd look at those shoes and I would, and I would get to the point where I would just flat despise those things because it's like, how can this be? I spent this much money and they just hurt my feet so bad. And so I'd put them up in the closet. And so when I'd pack my bags, get ready to take my next tour, because I'd be gone weeks at a time, I, you know, sometimes I'd throw those shoes in and then I'd wear them, same thing. And I just refused to sell those things. But every time I looked at them, it just made me mad that I felt like one, I'd gotten talked into it, but two, I had fallen in love with the looks of them, but not the functionality. And so that's how we've got to look at these RVs. You may be out here looking at units. You may find one on the online traders or the, you know, the market places that we have online that we can get into. And they may look good. The pictures may be great. But, you know, if we just jump out there and buy it and without really going through it and checking it out, we're going to find that we're going to be like I was when I bought those shoes. Every time you use that thing, you're going to despise it. You're going to find yourself, you have it parked in storage. So you just, you find yourself, you're using it less and less and less because it's not what you thought it was. And so I want to make sure 
that we spend some time together today and let me walk you through some things. And these are some pain points and I'm going to show you some things that you can do to make your life easier. I'm going to take you to some sites that you can pull up some information. I'm going to share some tidbits with you because I don't want you to be having the regrets like I did when I bought those shoes. Okay. So here's some things you need to know. There's going to be five things. And, but I'll tell you, I, I, I share this quite a bit at a lot of the RV shows because what I find is, is that many times people don't do their homework, the running on the emotion. So you have to ask yourself the number one thing, most important of all things, what do you enjoy doing? If you enjoy the outdoors, because maybe you have that job we call the old golden handcuffs, or maybe you have been downsized where you're working a job that's not the thing that you really want to do, but it is the job that's helping to keep, keep the lights on and keep everybody together as a family. Or maybe you're one of those individuals that's going through that situation to where maybe you got downsized. Uh, I can't tell you the stories I'm hearing that people went into their office and there's the HR director. And next thing you know, they slide a check across the counter and say, thank you very much. And turning your keys, your cell phone, your company car, and life changed for them in just a blink of an eye. So let's take a look at what what is it about your lifestyle? I mean, are you looking about doing this thing as a casual? Because you know you still maybe have that job and you need to have some way to blow off a little steam. And maybe you do those long weekends, like maybe you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or or maybe you just have some vacation saved up where you kind of get away. So you kind of have to you build up that pressure point, you gotta release it every now and then. Or maybe you're one of those individuals that still wants to hang on to that house, that brick and stick house that you have, because maybe it's paid for, and, or that's where all your stuff is, or, or maybe that's where your family is around that area. And we see that quite a bit, that there's still that family connection that you have, but you still want to travel. So what happens is, is that you set yourself up and you say, okay, you work a calendar. I mean, it's, I've seen people that they know exactly where they're going to be at certain times because they've got to be back because the kids have got graduation. I've got this going on. I've got doctor's appointments. And so what they'll do is they'll do this part-time thing. They'll leave and come back. They'll leave and come back. There's nothing wrong with that, but you got to know what you're looking for. And then there's some folks, and this is the one that Lady E and I and, and got into and I know Steve Anderson because we followed them around all over the country doing these, these events and stuff for training at RV, from RV parks for technicians and mobile techs, uh, RV inspectors. And so we were living full time on the road. Literally everything we had was everything that we needed was inside that RV. It's a different lifestyle. It is so weird when you first start out because you're going back to the same bed, the same, I mean, everything on the inside of your rig is the same regardless of where you are. And if you want to really watch how odd it is, watch your pets when you take them outside because we took our pets with us because I mean, Mo and Ginger were just part of the family because we had these weenie dogs. And let me just tell you, as far as they're concerned, they were, <laughs> they were just like us. You know, they were part of the pack. But what was really weird is we'd pull into a park and we'd open the door and we'd pick them up and set them on the ground and they'd look around like, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden, pretty soon they got into the groove of it to where they saw it as a new adventure for them. They'd be out there. So they'd be out there sniffing around, checking things out. They'd meet new neighbors and so on. So here's that full-time experience. So you're looking at this thing and say, okay, what is my lifestyle? What is it I want to do? So if you cannot answer that question, I'm going to encourage you to kind of go slow now. But if it's something you say, you know, I know exactly what we're going to do, then pursue it with all, all the energy you have. Because I'll tell you, we've had some couples that we have come across that they were making plans and they, was, they had this, someday I'm going to do this. And someday we're, when John retires, we're going to go do this. We've got three more years and we're going to go do this. And I, and I come to mind right now of a couple that uh, he passed away like about a year and a half before he was scheduled to retire. And she's a lost duck. She really is because they had plans. They were going to do this together. So let me just say this. We never, never know when that time may be. So if we have that opportunity, take advantage of it because you never, never know. And I can tell you stories of how Lady E and I lost a daughter uh, and you know we didn't see it coming. I can tell you stories about a very good friend of mine who's in the RV experience and uh, he caught the virus and they had him in ICU for four weeks. 
So long and short of it, he didn't come out. So my point is this, if it's what you're looking for, pursue it all the vigor that you have because we never know if we have that next day, okay? So just ask yourself, are you into the sporting events? Because maybe you got the kids and you're doing the soccer. When Now that we kind of begin to start lifting the shelter in place, we're going to start seeing the sports come back. So maybe you need that RV so you can keep the kids all together. Or maybe you're going to be one of those that's traveling and seeing the country, whether you're full-time or part-time. Or maybe you're going to be doing the work camper experience. Folks, that's one of the easiest ways to fund what you're doing wanting to travel across the country. I'm talking to people who've taken some pretty good hits on their retirement. And so they're having to reply, replace that income with something else. And so work camping or possibly even running a business while you're traveling. I mean, those are the two things that I see over and over again that I look at what Work Camper News has been doing. And I see it over and over again, how it works for people so they can earn their keep. I mean, we're using work campers here at the RV park here in Athens, and we work with them on situations where they put in a certain number of hours and they get their site. And then the extra hours, we have a program that's tied in with the school that, that if they're one of those individuals that's selected to be a work camper here, they can actually bank hours and apply it to their tuition to go to school here. So there's different ways that you can do this, but the beautiful thing about having this business, and this is what Steve Anderson taught us, if you have a business, you have the advantage to take some tax benefits that you normally don't get to take. And Kohler taught us that. You know, Mark Kohler, who's the accountant and the attorney that work camper, really, they bring him in. He shares a lot of things. And it's amazing things that were never taught in college. I mean, I've got a business degree, and I never learned some of these things. But Kohler told me, told Lady E and I one time, he said, guys, you've got to give me something to work with. And he set us up in, a, in our own business so we can now have be able to write off a lot of our expenses. And so he's showing you how to do this. And, and so Work Camper Guys is the way to go. And so starting a business many times, if you're going to travel, this may be the way to offset some of your expenses. And then, of course, you may be thinking about doing this full-time living. Maybe you have an income. You know what? There's nothing wrong with that because a lot of times you guys might volunteer because we see a lot of opportunities for people to stay at a place. If they volunteer, then they can exchange maybe their site for that that place, that, that full-time work they're doing. So, you know, you get to stay at some of the government places, some of the, um, I don't know, res the reserves and places like that. I mean, who knows? You might be down at, and believe it or not, there's, I saw one of these on the ads. You can count alligators down in Florida as a work camper. So, you know, there's some weird stuff that you can do, but it, it only pops up if you're out here looking for it. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. That was a great presentation about the very first thing they need to know. And as you have shared in your presentation, uh, information is very key in helping them understand how to go about purchasing that RV or to make sure they're utilizing it in the right way. The National RV Training Academy is, is our company and our training facility that we have in Athens, Texas. And we're going to encourage you to check it out by going to www.nrvta.com to learn more. Thank you for joining us.